I'm not talking about people powerlifting to be powerlifters. Mm -hmm. And I'm also not talking about powerlifting as a sport. I'm just talking about the three lifts that comprise, mm -hmm. that make up powerlifting and yes. how I just think it's a good idea for anybody to implement them. Joe Rogan is like the, the king of it. I mean, he's brought so much to the forefront in terms of uh, nutrition and training. And, and hopefully that trend just keeps continuing so it can keep helping uh, people get into the gym. But powerlifting is like, it's something that kind of goes up and down, has little peaks and valleys here and there. Mm -hmm. When I was young and the gyms that I went to, it was pretty popular, but it wasn't like a pop culture thing. Yeah. Um, maybe five to eight years ago, it caught on pretty pretty strongly. Yeah. Might be as strongly as it ever catches on. <clears throat> um, but what I think is important just to share is just the power of those movements, a bench press, a squat, a deadlift doesn't have to be that exact movement any variation of that you can mm -hmm. have a trap bar deadlift you can do partial range of motion deadlifts um you can do variations of a squat any type of squat uh i like a lot of the information that joel seedman is pumping out i don't see any reason why people can't do partial range of motion squats or box squats if they have limitations or they have pain yeah and then same thing with bench pressing bench press with a slingshot or if you're like, man, I, for some reason I can only do incline, go ahead and do incline. Mm -hmm. If you can only do dumbbells, go ahead and do dumbbells. Uh, you know, I, But I think the key thing to those lifts is the fact that you can use, normally, you can use a good amount of weight on those lifts. Yes. And you, because you can use a good amount of weight on those lifts, it gives you an opportunity to kind of overload the body and to send the body the message of, hey, we need more muscle mass for this. Mm -hmm. You know, when I sometimes talk about powerlifting, I, I feel as if some people think I'm shitting on powerlifting, <laughs> and I'm not because if somebody goes too far down with jujitsu, let's say, right, Brazilian jujitsu, and they don't do any strength training, but they just like jujitsu, jujitsu, jujitsu. That's the only thing I do, right? Mm -hmm. Then they're going to end up becoming this pliable martial artist person who has some good isometric strength. But I see a lot of people that do purely jujitsu get injured a lot because they mm. lack strength in other areas. So their joints aren't as strong as they could be. So they're, they would actually have a lot of benefit of doing some training in the gym. People that go too, too deep down the rabbit hole of bodybuilding, just pure bodybuilding, bodybuilding, bodybuilding. Well, a lot of those individuals not only go down that road, they move really stiff ways, mm -hmm. they look really good, but then they can't bend down to tie their shoes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dysfunction. Yep. So what what the awesome thing is that we're talking about is that you can do powerlifting, you can do bodybuilding, you can do jujitsu, you can do any sport, but the gym can help balance things out for you and help balance out your body and help balance out your movement, right? With anything, you can go compete in powerlifting, but you can also move really well. You can be mobile, um, and you could you could have you can have strength in different areas. Um, that's I think that's what we're seeing a lot of. Because when I look at a lot of now top powerlifters or people that are getting into powerlifting, they're not just doing powerlifting. They're doing some other things along with that to deal with deficiencies that happen when you only focus on the sport. I also don't see anything wrong with like just doing the lift just to get the exercise. Yeah. You know, I did uh, 10 sets of two reps with uh, 225 pounds. So it wasn't like, and I was a squat. It wasn't like I was some earth shattering weights that I was moving around. Mm -hmm. It just felt good. Rest intervals in between were short. Um, it just felt like a really good training session. It felt like a worthy thing for my legs. Yeah. Woke up today, my legs were like a little bit sore. Uh, nothing too crazy, but... Uh, I don't think you need, even need a lot of weight. I think it's just like check in on these exercises, mess around with them a little bit. Uh, again, if, uh, I hear so many people, they'll they'll say that they hurt their back or, or something like that. And I would just say, does 135 hurt your back? Does 95 hurt your back? Because it's not necessarily, I'm not talking about like just doing the lift just to get the benefit of doing the lift. I'm talking about the exercise of it. Mm. It's a hip hinge. It's a squat. Mm. Right, you got a, you have a deadlift, which is a hip hinge. You have a squat, which is really good for your hips, and then you have some sort of range of motion type thing for the upper body. Now you could do dips and push ups and other things other than bench press, but uh, it seems like a pretty good one to me, and it kind of works the whole body as well. And so, it's not really just that you're doing the exercise; it's not just for the overload, but it also is to get the benefit of just moving around like that. And I think that you should be a proficient in that. Pat Roger family, how's it going? Hope you're enjoying the episode. And this episode is brought to you by Merrick 
Health, the premium telehealth clinic from Derek from More Plates, More Dates. Now, if you've been wanting to get your blood work done or you wanted to get your blood work analyzed by a physician, Merrick has your back on that. And Andrew, can you tell them how to do that? Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys know exactly what labs you want to get, you guys can load them all up into your cart and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT10 to save 10% off all labs. But if you're like me and you're not sure exactly where to start, you guys can get the Power Project panel. You guys can head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. You guys will see a whole panel of like over 26 different labs, everything from head to toe that you're going to need to know what's going on under the hood. And again, to get in on that, head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save $101 off of that entire panel. Uh, links to them and all the information down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. So you, maybe you guys can tell me if I'm like way off base here, mainly because I haven't really been in the world of powerlifting for very long. It's been a blink of an eye. But what I see is it's almost like powerlifters kind of do things backwards. Um, what I mean is like they'll go for a heavy squat. Uh, they'll work their way up to their working sets or work, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards they go do the accessories. Yes. And you know, when it comes to, you know, these accessories, it's almost like they don't care. Like all they care about is squat bench dead. Yeah. So they work their way up to their heavy set and then they kind of go do the other shit. And we all know that like as energy levels go, uh, they don't take them as serious. Yeah. You know? Okay. So I always think like, I feel like they're doing it backwards because mm -hmm. if they got in a lot of the accessory work, yeah, they'd be fatigued. They'd be beaten down pretty bad when it comes to their actual main movement of the day. But in my head, I'm like, well, if you're kind of, if you're trying to be as strong as possible, you know, you're kind of going to be the sum of all the parts when you, when you are working these accessory movements. Mm -hmm. And then on meat day, when you don't have to mess with the accessories, now you're even stronger because you're only going to do the big main movement. Um, I just think maybe people would be able to move a little bit better and they'd find that maybe they'd be a little bit stronger. And I know it's taking energy away from the main lift from that yeah. training day, but I think overall the volume that you get in and sure, you're going to take a plate off the bar, but maybe, you know, you'll, you, you won't get as hurt. Your range of motion might be a lot better uh -huh. and you'd be able to do it a lot longer. I've done a lot of stuff like that in my training, you know, mm. where we'll do like a whole back workout and then finish off with like a deadlift. Yeah. Um, I've done a bunch of stuff uh, for upper body, you know, where again, I might be kind of working more the back of my body and, and the lats and stuff like that. And then I might go on to like bench press. Um, some of, you know, some of the heavier lifts uh, when you do, you know, five sets of five or something like that, and you have 70% of your max, let's just say, um, that's pretty significant. It's mm -hmm. just a pretty significant amount of weight. So you can't, it's, it would be difficult to uh, get a similar working load from some other assistance exercises that aren't maybe as valuable. Mm. Uh, but there's a lot of assistance exercises that you can choose that are really valuable. Like anything with a barbell, it's going to be really valuable. And I'm not saying that like a tricep push down or lat pull down is completely useless, but. <laughs> they're kind of no, they're, yeah. they're, they're just not they're just not great movements they might add to hypertrophy and hypertrophy might add to uh you having a bigger muscle and a bigger muscle might be a stronger muscle because you just have better leverage mm -hmm. so there's there are some things like that but um when i'm talking about powerlifting kind of more from from like now times <laughs> Rather than me talking about like my powerlifting career, I'm not talking about people powerlifting to be powerlifters. Mm -hmm. And I'm also not talking about powerlifting as a sport. I'm just talking about the three lifts that comprise, mm -hmm. that make up powerlifting and yes. how I just think it's a good idea for anybody to implement them and implement them whatever way that you want. And I think that uh, what you're laying out is actually a really good idea. Like why not do some hamstring curls mm. and uh, why not drag a sled for 20 minutes and then hit your deadlift? Like um, I think it's a good idea to get some of those assistance exercises in. It just kind of acts as like a warm up. And if you go into something a little bit fatigued, um, you know, that it can be a good thing. I would just say maybe you want to, you know, switch it up a little bit here and there. So that way you can kind of see, where you're, uh, if you like to lift heavy, where your real deadlift is at occasionally. 
And Andrew, I actually really like where that logic is because, mm -hmm. you know, we think of things like the wedding warm up. Mm -hmm. You know, that wedding's warm up will, for some people, will be a fucking workout. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a lot of reps to drive a lot yeah. of blood into specific muscle groups that you're mm -hmm. about to work in that day. Um, but I, 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 you know, most powerlifters or, 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 yeah, most powerlifters who are competing in the sport, when they think about that, they're like, well, I want exactly like you said, you know, I want all of my energy mm -hmm. ready to hit this lift for my top set, whatever that top set that is um and i don't want to be tired uh, by doing a bunch of accessory work beforehand but i think there's a really cool middle ground with what you mentioned there for example if a lifter is going to be doing a bench press day where they're working up to a triple or a double or whatever that is maybe they have some accessories that are like some dumbbell bench or whatever but potentially maybe you do some light dumbbell bench and maybe some of some lighter tricep work right uh maybe a few sets of what your accessory should be just a few sets mm -hmm. not close to failure nothing that's going to tire you out but something that can drive a lot of blood to those specific muscle groups that are going to be worked during your bench press but also prime your joints to get you ready for your bench press workout mm -hmm. and then go to your bench but by the time you get to your bench you're probably going to feel really really good before you and really warm uh, as you're working up to that top set of whatever you're going to do. So I think that's a really, really mm -hmm. good middle ground. And I also do agree with you that pa people that are within the sport tend to underestimate the importance and underestimate the amount of development that they can get from their accessory exercises, especially when it does come to gaining muscle in smaller areas that typically aren't hit when you're doing the big lifts, mm -hmm. like your rear delts or different parts of your chest if you're doing a, maybe an incline or whatever, <laughs> or you know different parts of your legs when you're doing a, extensions or maybe if you have a, a GHR or whatever. Um, those, when they come at the end, you. You, people tend to kind of sandbag that shit <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> because it, it's not a big part of they see, what you're going to do on the platform. They see abs on the list and they just go home. <laughs> like, Peace. Who needs that shit? I'm out of here. Right? <laughs> What's a couple fucking sit-ups going to really right. do for me? That's not going to help. Proper Project Fam, this episode is brought to you by Vivo Barefoot Shoes. We've been wearing these shoes for almost a year now. They're flexible. They have a wide toe box. They allow your feet to get connected to the ground and they will make your feet stronger and they don't look like shit. Like a lot of these other barefoot shoes. Andrew, how can they get them? You guys got to head over to vivobarefoot.com and at checkout, enter promo code POWERPROJECT to save 20% off your entire order. Links to them down in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Let's get back to this video. What about, um, you know, we're just talking about powerlifting. So uh, from the outside in, they see uh, powerlifting motivation. Here's Mark Bell squatting over a thousand pounds and, you know, a bunch of other people going nuts. Um, how, how do people keep it safe? You know, how do people stay injury free when it comes to doing your maximum lift on a squat bench or dead? Again, you know, when I'm talking about like uh, doing some of the power lifts, I'm talking about doing the movements, doing the exercises and not necessarily maxing out. Um, I am a huge fan of like singles and doubles and triples, and I actually think it would provide a ton of value uh, for a lot of people. Um, if I'm thinking about somebody coming in there, they just want to make the most progress, the fastest possible way. Uh, if that person, if I, if I'm kind of blind to how old they are, I'm thinking like some versions of bench squat and deadlifts would be great because of kind of the metabolic cost of those exercises and the fact that you overload. Uh, but if somebody's coming in and they're 70 years old, now I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> we just okay, maybe we got to switch up the strategy a little mm -hmm. bit. Maybe we should drag the sled. Maybe we should do some farmer's carries. Uh, maybe partial range of motion deadlifts because now we can work the grip. We can work the lower back and we can kind of uh, fake it almost, fake mm -hmm. some of those movements. But the power lifts are, are, are really, they're really critical and they're really crucial. However, I don't think that people need to worry too much about like trying to go real heavy on them. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to do the movement uh, but as they say in CrossFit, you want to be able to do the movements unbroken. And then like, what does that look like? It's hard to know what that even looks like. But you, there's a lot of videos that you can watch online of people doing proper deadlifts, proper squats, proper bench pressing. Uh, and a good rule of thumb is that your uh, last rep of your last set should look like the first rep of your first set. So again, if you're doing a five by five or three sets of three or something like that, your last rep on your last set shouldn't be this crazy grinder where you're like looking at the floor mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing your squats. Mm -hmm. It should be the, f the first, they should all be clean, 
And if they're not clean, you got to go back and kind of clean them up and you want them to be, it's going to be really hard to get hurt. It's really hard to get hurt when your form and technique is, is locked in properly. Hey, how's it? Sorry. I'm not going to whisper. <laughs> I know you guys are enjoying this content and we love talking to all these people and bringing you guys great information. So if you could help us out by hitting the like button, because that helps the algorithm subscribe and hit the notification bell, we're going to continue reaching more people and we're going to continue helping more people. Talk to y'all later.